Hey, what's up everybody? Video 44 coming at you with another video. All right, so I figured I'd do a therapy session for the first time in like a long time. Been so wrapped up in basketball, so wrapped up in various conversations about different celebrities who are doing all kinds of stuff that are very difficult to understand. But, you know, nevertheless, we're all wrapped up in the, in the sauce with that nonsense. And it is time to uh, just kind of decompress. And so I just want to, get on here turn on the camera and keep this tradition going uh, so thank you everybody for rocking with me uh, on these therapy sessions I've made it a point uh, over the last two years to turn on the camera and speak freely as if you guys are my therapist and the intention to do that is to help myself of course get, uh, overcome whatever may be going on in the present moment uh, that's the, that's the practice and it's helped along with other things like art, music, weed smoke, stuff like that that's just ultimately made me uh, kind of manage my, my head and all those different uh, challenges that, that come with just my, my own existence. So I wake up this morning and nothing's too bad really. I'm not going to sit here and act like I'm in a bad mood or the world is bad. It's just one of those things where it's like you know, if you've been following me, you know, we've been doing this AMC uh, holding process for about a year and a half, a little more than that. And I'm very much proud of what I'm doing. I, I have a tradition here on this channel as well. I call them Apes Rant uh, or An Apes Rant. Um, I name it that just about every time. But I'm, I'm usually talking about my experience in that and, and, and motivating the the apes and, and everybody who's involved in what I'm doing to keep going and, and to know why I'm in it and why, I, why I've sacrificed, um, you know, what I've sacrificed to be a part of it and how I've struggled so greatly uh, in the year and a half that this has been. You know, I've had some hard years um, dealing with certain things, my mother's uh, health when, when she was going through the, the end of things. So uh, that was obviously a very rough era. Um, my first couple years of life was was pretty tough too because you had some trauma going there. So I've had some stuff happen, you know what I mean? But without the presence of, of abnormal trauma and, and, and extreme bereavement, this is the hardest thing that I've had to, to do or deal with. Uh, it's given me more than it's taken. And it's giving me more than it's taken because I'm not out of it. I'm still here. But what it's given me is um, the ability to stand still while everything appears to be unstable around me in terms of my circumstances. It's allowed me the patience to stand still while things are unstable. And I don't know if that's an attribute that I should have been looking to obtain in this way because there are a lot of things I could have done to relieve myself of these issues but they would have opened up other issues for me as well which is what I understand so I've managed myself the way that I have in a very abnormal way isolating myself the way that I have for as long as I have uh, and, and, and the science behind that was not only to help me cope with my brain and, and ultimately do what it does naturally but it's also to save money the main purpose for why I lived the way that I did was to, to save to hold on to the shares limiting anything that would otherwise uh, put me in a position to um, spend any money so like going out with buddies and stuff, I cut all that out and, and certain other things that needed to be cut out in order to effectively hold on to money, I cut out. The only things I didn't cut out were the things I felt I needed to make this experience a palatable one. Unfortunately, those things are expensive too. The money needs to be made and I have not had any desire to, uh, to go out and, and, and deal with the public in, on any level at all. Uh, to be completely honest with you. I've just had no desire to do that since I've quit my job. You know what I mean? I, in this era we're in, everything gets brought to you if you want it to, and so it's a click of your phone, and I 
I've taken advantage of that as somebody who who deeply uh, mentally uh, desires isolation. You know what I mean? With somebody who desires isolation the way that I do, uh, it, it, it catered to what ultimately came natural to me. It gave me an excuse to retreat. Uh, something that I always look to do when I'm um, in the presence of people for too long. You know, it's one of those situations where it's just naturally how I am. For whatever reason, my brain doesn't tell me there's no one here. Someone needs to be here. That's not that's not how my brain works. My brain works. No one's here. Now I can let my hair down. That's how my brain works. So it's one of those situations where in my mind, loneliness is not a real thing. It's more so freedom. The freedom to be yourself. The freedom to let go of certain things that you must be concerned with when considering others. How you're perceived. What comes out of your mouth. Checks and balances. Things that really, really genuinely affect how others uh, uh, um, see you. Those are the things that I'd rather not have to adhere to at all. When I'm in my house... There's nothing to consider. Only myself and the things that matter to me. And, and in that space, I find a great deal of calm. No anxiety. No desire to um, be in any space that otherwise makes me feel uncomfortable. That's what isolation does for me. It protects me. And so, as I perceive that to be something that is normal to me, but... Am self-aware enough to understand that that's something that harms me. Uh, I find myself in the camera in hopes of trying to show the world what it is that I struggle with. Um, while keeping my mind going, you know what I mean? Because full isolation without communication would turn you completely uh, outside, inside out, mentally. So that's part of it. It's just trying to practice some sense of normalcy. But also... Um, I think I have a lot to say. The, the brain desires isolation um, because of how it perceives reality and the many, many different variables it sees. Um, and I can speak of myself in the third person this way because I'm referring to the brain specifically. But like the reason why I perceive the world a certain way is because of how many different variables I often see with various things I'm looking at. And ultimately, it leaves me somewhat mentally paralyzed at time, whether I'm perceiving how someone's receiving something I'm saying or perceiving how I'm, you know, received in, in, in the circumstance from a physical nature. Because a lot of times, a lot of my insecurities came from my physical appearance as a young man and certain things in, in my childish, um, in my inner child, I guess you can say, are things that I have very much a difficult time um, suppressing you know what I mean that inner child that those inner you know concerns about safety inner concerns about perception of others inner concerns a lot of those things have been thought through but the behavior of such uh, practices have not for whatever reason been able to be shaken off and so it's one of those things where it's like I guess the lack of others that I've allowed in my circumference has made it so that I haven't been challenged to make the changes that otherwise would come naturally if people have other people in their lives. You know what I mean? It's like, hey, get up, do something. It's just like anything else. When my mother was around, I was basically the same way. But every Sunday we go out and go to church. Every Friday we go to the movies. And then I wasn't in control of my own schedule. So, of course, we did what she told me to do. I get up, go to school. Now, every day I get up, go to school, face the anxieties that I run from every day. You know what I mean? So it got to a point where after going through that every single day and perceiving it as I did, I just started to reject the notion that I needed to be in any of those places. I desired to be away from those places more so than I desired to please my mother, more so than I desired to get an education, more so than I desired to be around people that I enjoyed being around in those places. All of that stuff uh, took a backseat to the anxiety and the depression of... Uh, of, of, of deep insecurity and in uh, the perception of different dangers that might actually not be real to me but because of how my brain works are real to me <laughs> and so on, beyond all of that 
becomes not this desire to be aggressive like a lot of people who who didn't in turn have those type of issues. They become aggressive, they start becoming militant or what have you. They start becoming aggressive to try to protect themselves. That's not how I am. That's not where my natural instincts go. For me, it's like, all right, let me get the hell away from all of y'all. Get to a space where I can manage myself, and as long as I'm away from you, I'm fine. Right? But then on the on the inside, I'm looking to to connect with people. I think I got answers for certain things because of the brain and how complicated it tends to operate. I think I can see things that others may not be able to see. I can figure out things naturally that people aren't looking at because I've removed myself from certain everyday distractions just by sheer nature. You know, I'm not going out dealing with traffic every day. I'm not dealing with family and friends and girlfriends and all these different things that otherwise distract people from seeing things a certain way. So in the midst of having these awkward, natural uh, ways about myself, I also find myself in a space where there's a niche because of my unique position in the world and my unique way of looking at the world. I can provide a very unique perspective to the world. So I've learned to embrace all these different versions of crazy in my own head to kind of ignore what otherwise is disrupted and lean on the strengths you know and the strengths that I believe I have are uh, you know my ability to to sort certain things out just by having what I call tea leaves little things to look at put them together I'm an analytical thinker and so with the anxiety with the, the perception issues with all of the different inner child issues there's also a what I consider like a, a consciousness, a, a spirit, uh, a computer or something of sorts that allows me to access certain things that maybe might not be on my subcon, might not be on the forefront of my mind, but may have some DNA in my subconscious. What I'm able to do oftentimes is I spew when my mouth just moves because communication comes to me so naturally. Uh, I'm able to access certain things in my subconscious at times without really being focused on what they are they just blurt out of my mouth so you know when people talk about people shooting from the hip and not doing homework and, and, and dealing with uh, conversations and subjects that they should not be speaking on because they haven't done as much homework I'm guilty of doing that more times than I'm proud of because of exactly how my brain works uh, shooting from the hip is exactly what it is. Half of the stuff I ain't thinking about before I open my mouth to speak. And then it just blurts out and it makes a lot of sense after I listen to it. So it's like, because I know my brain does that a lot of times, even though I'm like literally the worst misspeaker of all time, <laughs> which is another reason why I don't find myself professional because I just tend to, uh, I'm one of those people who have a fork in the road type mentality as it pertains to words. I can go to this word or I can go to that word. And in the moment, I might go with the opposite word and it will turn the entire thing of what I'm talking about upside down. And when I listen back to what I'm saying, it's like, damn, people aren't gonna make sense of it because I literally used the word that meant the absolute opposite. But, you know, as people listen to more of me, I think you'll just kind of pick that up. Uh, but yeah, misspeaking is a big problem. So it's like, when you have all these different things that come together to make you feel somewhat inadequate or insecure or just less than or if not all of that unprepared for what it is that you want to be prepared for so it just comes down to me just needing a lot of help <laughs> mentally that I'm not getting that I'm not going to force myself to get because I don't naturally look to get it no different than the same issue that I'm referring to I'm not going to be going out looking for someone to talk to for these issues uh, if I if I had that the issue itself would not be there and so that's what i was trying to explain to certain people as i was growing up it's like the very things that you're asking me to do are the very things my mind is telling me definitely do not do in certain instances it pertains to facing these anxieties inner child stuff whatever you know my consciousness is telling me yo you should probably do this but my brain is telling me you know what whatever the consequences are of this We'll get through it when we do. But for the time being, you must keep yourself away from whatever it is that stresses you. And when I stay in the red, as I call it, or in spaces that stress me, I tend to lose stability. I tend to lose stability. Uh, and what that means is, when I expose myself to things that make me uncomfortable for too long, I become irrational in nature in some ways. Um, I'll be there for a long period of time, like I did with my last job. It was a place called The Shores. I was there for 
couple months, I was fine. This wasn't my last job. It was actually a job before that. But I was there for a couple months, um, almost a year, maybe a little longer. I don't know. It's a time blurs. But I, I did the job for a time, and you'll go back and see some of those videos. I was in like a little, uh, like a dungeon-looking thing where it was me sitting on a couch and all kinds of uh, stone-ish type of stuff behind me because we were in like a little uh, janitor's office type of thing that was in the garage area so if you ever see some of those videos when we're in a blue shirt that's what i'm referring to the light blue shirt security stuff back in those days i was there for a time i did it for as long as i could all the stuff started happening in the world with the black lives matter racial nonsense all the triggering stuff that we're now smart enough to understand is bullcrap but back then we were very much triggered by yeah that stuff when all that was going on, I just found myself in a space where I didn't want to be in my job anymore. And what that means is I started being around people. We were going through all that racial stuff. And a lot of the people I was around were people who didn't look like me. And it started to affect my brain. I don't know if it affected how they looked at me, but it definitely affected how I perceived them looking at me. And um, some of the energy that I received around there, I just didn't receive very well. And it just got to a point where it reached the overload and I just quit on the spot. <laughs> You know, the, the behavior and, 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 and the uh, uh, the desire to stay uniformed in, in what it is I was supposed to do uh, just deteriorated. And I just, regardless of what was real in my life in terms of what I had to pay for, I could no longer bring myself to do it. It got to a point where it was unstable for me in my mind. Going back to that place, being so unhappy. Quit that job. A couple months later, picked up another job, stayed there for a time, and eventually it went the, the same way. You know what I mean? Just you're there, and then eventually you get so unstable, it's like a, bo a pot of boiling hot water till it finally reaches to the top, and it's like bubbling, and then you can't do nothing but, you know, just see the water go everywhere. That's how my mind goes when I stay in a situation that makes me unhappy for too long. And so it's like, even when I try, you know what I mean? Even when I try, it gets to a point where it's like, I can't can't stay here it's gonna to get to a point where I start becoming very very unhappy dangerously unhappy so that's what it was for my last job you know I was finding myself so unhappy I wasn't able to perform the duties I wasn't I wasn't behaving um, in a way that made any sense in some of the things that I was doing and so it, it got to a point where I was so unhappy to where I couldn't bring myself to go back I quit the job irrationally didn't communicate properly all kinds of stuff that was done completely abnormally um, under stress and just being fed up with 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 doing something that I just uh, was not willing to do so when you when you reach that place twice in a matter of two years and you're trying your hardest to, to feed yourself and make up uh, you know just make up the difference for what it is that you don't provide for yourself naturally with money you know you you wish that you could do what everybody else does but you didn't condition yourself to do that you see what I'm saying if I would have been more conditioned to, to do the, the everyday thing at school instead of spending so much time away from school back in the day going once every two months and stuff like that if I had conditioned myself properly like normal human beings then going to school going to work every day and dealing with human beings uh, would be a much more easy thing for my mind to deal with but because I didn't grow up in the rhythm of that trying to do that every day is like uh it depends on the era I'm in. If I'm in a good era, I'm cool. I can do it for three, four years before I, before I burn out. But if I'm going through what I was going through at that time, I can keep a job for about six months before I lose my mind. I really can, about six months. And then it's, after that, I'm like speeding down the highway after work, 140 miles an hour, screaming at the top of my lungs like I can't do this. You know what I mean? Like it's that bad. And so because I know it's that bad, I've retreated away from work. I've held my shares. I've spent freaking a hundred dollars a week in that kind of thing, <laughs> like literally for like a year and a half, because <laughs> that's what is required in my mind to hold on to the money that I have without having to go back out there, drive myself crazy chasing some more. It's a god honest truth. So, what I've concluded is, in prayer and all the different things uh, that I was doing to try to cope with, with myself losing it. What I came to the conclusion was is that I wanted to do something 
different, that I needed some purpose and all of those different things. And, you know, somewhere in between the Shores job and that last job, AMC came into my life. And so with the Shores position, when I was in the dungeon, I didn't have none of that going on. But once I got to that other job that I'm referring to, that I, that I left a year ago, it was now in place. So it kept me at that job longer, you know what I mean, than I would have been there. See, that's what, that's where the damage really was. See, once I'm in a space where it's red, when the boiling is going on, I need to get the hell out of there, right? I need to, I need to be able to remove myself from that situation. That's just how the mind perceives itself. Need to get out of there. Not necessarily need, but I'm telling myself, and I believe that, right? I stayed there in that boiling red probably for about four months probably about four months with the screaming I can't stand it I don't I'm not happy I'm waking up in the morning miserable I'm going to sleep miserable yeah because of the shares because of what it is that I did, committed myself to I forced myself to finally be in the red for the first time in my life like I hate this I want to do anything but this but because I'm committed to what it is that keeps me here I'm gonna keep coming and so, yeah, that that completely drove me into a place that was not stable at all. It got so bad that, I, you know, I just, I lost it completely again. So it's like, all right, all right, God, you know, as, as, a, as a believer, you know, I'm praying. I'm like, you brought this into my life, you know, this, 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 this purpose. You obviously uh, made me who I am with all the experiences I have so I'm wired this way for a reason I'm self-aware which means that this consciousness for all of these problems is here for a reason most people who have these issues don't are not aware of it and so it's like you gave me you gave me self-awareness you gave me all these troubles and then you gave me all this confidence and the talent to communicate and then you gave me the ability to put certain things together in an abnormal way and understand certain things that I don't think people do so I got to put all this to use. I, I don't have to worry about how miserable I am in my head about certain things that aren't for me. That's fine. We, 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 we've established that. But now how do I survive? That's what I was telling myself. All right, we got it. You got AMC. You need to survive because you want to see this through. This is your purpose. That's what it is. But how do you make yourself useful while you're dealing with yourself naturally? I think in a lot of cases... And this is another thing that I think you can be in a fork in the road about this. When you're like me, you're pretty certain that you could stand to do a few things differently to change the way you're doing things. But I've learned in my life at this stage in my life that because I surmise that all of this is here for a reason and I've suffered it already for as long as I have. You start praying to God about what it is he wants you to do. And the thing that he's telling you to do is do what comes naturally to you. See, that was also something. If I was sitting up praying and the Lord said, get your butt back to work. Like if that was the feeling, the vibes that I was getting from my inner prayers. Then I would have a struggle on my hands that's not present. That's what I want to explain to everybody. The war isn't necessarily within me and my behavior the war is with my my peace as I pray it tells me to stay still you know as I pray it's not telling me to challenge myself to go out there and work it's not telling me to get up and, and do things the right way it's telling me to stay here in this unorthodox manner and continue doing the things that I've been doing because the Lord is pleased with that. You understand what I'm saying? And a lot of people are going to hear that. And they're going to be like, yep, he's out to lunch. I agree. But in the presence of being out to lunch, I understand beyond the shadow of a doubt that I am self-aware. So in being self-aware, I can tell you when I believe I'm doing something wrong. What I'm telling you is, I believe conventionally. Conventionally. As it pertains to the X's and O's and the gravity of life, what I'm doing should not be even possible. Let alone, is it the right thing to do? It should not, I should not have been able to do this. Right? 
there are a lot of things that should have happened outside of my control that should have deteriorated this entire process. But because it's still in place, and because when I pray to, to God, to the Jesus and that I believe in, what I'm getting the vibes that I'm receiving is you stay where you at. I don't care what the world is telling you to do. I don't care what is coming your way. I don't care what it looks like. Do you not see that I've kept you afloat in ways that should not be possible? That's what comes to me in prayer. Do you not see that I've kept you afloat in ways that is not even logical? So in the presence of you struggling with yourself, you're living the one life that God gave you. And God is instilling in you not only the natural ability to do something that doesn't quite make sense, but then reaffirming in you that that is exactly what you should be doing. It's almost like Moses on the mountaintop. You know what I mean? It's like there's no real reason he's actually up there other than the belief that he's on some mission from God. And he can't confirm that to anybody else. But what he can say is God has done some amazing things while he's been on this mountain. And that is what I'm telling you. I've turned myself into a, an artist. I've made over 600 playlists. I've made over a thousand videos. I've turned my body into something that I can be proud of when I look in the mirror. There's a lot of things that I've done while I've been on this quote unquote mountaintop slash crazy mission. I've been able to improve my health. When I had this startup, I was having skin issues, food issues, weight issues. In those two years, when coming back into this house, dealing with my crazy head, I've been able to turn all of those things around, every last one of them, including my spirit. I was in a deep depression. I was engaging in practices that weren't best for me. In the presence of all of this, without engaging with a single human being, I've been able to turn all of that around, around by myself <laughs> without earning a single dollar and without a single person around to help me. Ain't nothing but God, y'all. Ain't nothing but God in being obedient to the unorthodox ways that he has me behaving. And in return, because of the time that I've spent being obedient slash crazy, I've been able to provide everything in this camera that you've seen. There would have been no other way for me to live the way that I was supposed to be living and do what it is that I have been doing. It ain't possible. It is not possible. So I turn on this camera to say today saying I'm so frustrated because I'm sick of doing things in an unorthodox way, feeling at peace about it while not receiving what it is that I'm waiting for. I believe in what I'm doing. They have not covered. And if you're a part of the AMC GME movement, you're very certain of what that means. The mission still stands. They have not covered. But what I'm telling you is I would love for my life to make sense. That's what I'm saying to you all. If I'm doing this, then certain things should be that. If I jump off a building, I don't go up. You fall down. Right? Morbid, but cause and effect. I ain't never seen nobody jump off and then fly up. What I'm telling you is I jumped off and ascended into the sky. Figuratively. Gravity don't make no sense in this situation. The only thing I can honestly say is I've been given a great deal of favor by people who have just understood that I have been going through a lot of stuff. And in that favor, I've just been praying to God for a continued day-to-day -day desire to just get up and keep doing what I've been doing. The art, everything, the channel, everything. And I've been able to do it, and I'm still doing it. I wake up this morning, my phone was cut off. I spent a little $50 it took to cut it back on. You know what I mean? Like This is money that is not being replenished naturally. It's, it's also being eaten away from what it is that I'm doing. But the specifics of what it is that we're dealing with <laughs> makes it so that even though I have not earned money since this process began, I have more shares than I had with when I quit my job. Again, gravity not being adhered to here. So for those who don't believe in the spirit of God or, you know, they don't think there's a Christ or whatever, I, I don't I don't have the uh, privilege of being able to lie to myself in that way. I don't have the privilege. 
But what I can say is I respect your belief because there are a lot of things about this situation that don't make any sense to me as I sit here. I can see why someone would say, you know what, that person's just crazy and they need a lot of help and that's it. But what I'm telling you is from the inside and from the inside of his brain, it ain't nothing but miracles going on. This is miracles after miracle after miracle. Every single day I turn on this camera is a literal miracle. Because by all intents and purposes, I shouldn't even be alive behaving this way. I should not even have survived this. With the depression that I'm naturally inclined to, the isolation and the lack of help, the lack of money coming in, I should not be alive. No EDD. I didn't get a single unemployment check in this entire two-year process. Not one. Like, none of this is even, none of this is even real, man. I feel like somebody is probably, like, in the background just giving me some type of grace. Like, this has to be God. It has to be. I ain't as much as communicate with the people I owe money to. It's the truth. My anxiety has made it so that I don't even want to communicate. Like, the grace I've been given has been divine. But the mission I'm on and the, and the things that I speak about, I feel, are also important. Things that I feel come naturally to me to share with you are things I think we need, all of us. That's why I encourage everybody to go back and look at some of them old videos. The good ones, the bad ones, the ones I'm most embarrassed about. And they're still there. All of them are still there. I want everybody to see everything, man. Because at the end of the day, whether this is something that can improve this in real time or not, I believe, I truly believe somewhere nestled in my algorithm, so to speak, in my life's room, math, you will find the DNA of a living God. I believe that. I believe that beyond the shadow of a doubt. If you look at the rhythm of my life from the moment that I was born, the very moment I was born, August 18th, 1215 AM, August 18th, 1984, since that very moment, if you time every single second of my life and you work it against some algorithm of some, some perfect math, you're going to find the divine in that. You're going to find it. Perfect timing, things that don't make any sense, blessings that come out of nowhere that, that align with exactly what it is that I need, blessings that come out of nowhere that align with exactly what it is that I was talking about, stuff like that, man. When, like little stuff that I'll say in regards to like, you know how we are in this era where you'll see something pop up in your phone that relates to something you're talking about yeah I've been having that happen to me well before the internet <laughs> well before the internet <laughs> you know it's just it's a very weird world I'm in man as it pertains to my perception of life and how I see it and how it comes to me it's very strange man <laughs> but I just I just feel myself to be someone who can only function the way he knows how to function and because of it he's nestled perfectly uh, in the world the way he needs to be and although a lot of this doesn't make any sense I'm ignoring the fact that it doesn't and just believing in the purpose of a greater divine and because of it it has me behaving in very strange ways I'd imagine feeling comfortable in positions that otherwise would make me uh, different and making me feel uncomfortable in positions that would otherwise allow me to assimilate I do not fight this anymore. God is real. His, his purpose is perfect. And what he's asking me to do is reasonable. Though unreasonable in nature, if that makes any sense. Because what I'm doing is holding my shares. Living as frugal as possible. And in doing so, along with the rest of the apes, we are going to change the world. My effort, along with the millions of other people who are doing what it is I'm doing in a different way, are going to make it so that your kids, your great-grandkids, your great-great-grandkids, and your great-great-grandkids will not be affected by whatever it is that these hedge funds are doing today. Whatever it is that they're funding, we are making it so they have to redirect those funds and push them back into the public put it back into the public where they've taken it from. That is what people like myself are trying to do with our money. 
We're not just trying to make it and then put it back into our situation. We're trying to take that money and put it back into a fight that would assure that we have a fair market for the for the for the near future. That's what I'm doing here. That's what the Lord has told me to do. That's exactly what he told me to do. That's exactly why he told me not to do this, that, and the third things that I know I should do for myself is because he wants me to stay in this fight in the way that I am. And I'm just doing it and I've been blessed ever since. But I wake up in the morning some days and it's harder than others. <laughs> and this is one of those days that was a bit more difficult than usual. But I can tell you this. I feel a lot better right now. I'm not ashamed about anything I said in this camera today. And if you go back and look at those therapy sessions you and, and some of those videos even prior to, you'll see exactly the journey. It's been a journey. I've had plenty of help. Not just from God, but from family members, my grandfather. Help has come. Help I was afraid to ask for. Help that I'm afraid to ask for again. It's the truth. Afraid to ask for help. Don't feel like I deserve it. Not at all. Even in the presence of feeling like a good ape. Even feeling like as if I go back out there and work, I'm going to be in the bubbly red you know, boiling mindset, whatever you want to call it, in the presence of all of those struggles. I still am responsible for myself. And so that's that's ultimately what I end up warring with. But because I adhere to a living God, that responsibility that I have to myself is not necessarily in a way that, that is forming... Uh, for me to change and get back out there to boil. What I'm supposed to do with my life is what comes naturally to me, I believe. And I think I'm much more productive in this unstable mindset, catering to it in isolation, than I would be out there in traffic, boiling, screaming, and miserable about my living. Now, my perception of what that is doesn't have to be. Right? I'm open to that. Just because I went through it twice doesn't mean the next time it has to be that way. I'm open to that. I think I'll leave it there. Leave it, <clears throat> leave it there. Open-ended. Open to things getting better. Open to things changing. Open to the Lord changing His direction on my life. At some point in time, He's going to want me to stop this. And when He does, I look to be ready just like I'm ready to do it. And that's the balance. <laughs> I'd imagine this comes to an end one way or another. And what I've taken from these two years, I'm going to carry with me one way or another. And that's why I'm happy about what it is that I've done, even if it gets a lot worse from here, because I know there are things I did in this two-year period that I couldn't buy, that I couldn't work into my equation if I did anything else priceless stuff that I picked up these last two years priceless so that's what I can say to you guys um, I gotta order my groceries <laughs> like that's where I'm at with it <clears throat> you know back to reality but I do want to thank you guys for taking the time to listen to this stuff I do want to thank you, thank you for taking the time to listen to all of my stuff and just know that you are purposeful in your own right, even if what it is that you feel you're doing is unconventional, or even if you feel like there's pressure to do something different, I think prayer comes first. You know, your conscience tells you to do something, you should probably follow it after that. That's what I'm doing, and this is what it looks like. My name is BDL44. Thank you all for watching.